Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. It is of course Chelsea of She Designs Things. And in today's video, we are going to be learning the basics of HTML for Google Sites. So of course, if you'd like to know more, then stay tuned. All right, so you all voted and elected to have the next video be getting started in Google Sites or getting started in HTML, learning the basics for Google Sites. So that's what we're going to do. I should also note that Google Sites HTML is going to be a little bit different than learning general HTML. If you wanna learn general HTML, I'll leave some links to resources down below. But most of what you're going to learn is going to be to help you improve your Google site designs and specifically your Google site designs. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started. So for this tutorial, I am going to be using code sandbox.io. This is an online code editor. I typically would use Visual Studio Code, but because I wanted this to be um, somewhat easy for others to follow along with, I decided to use an online code editor since this is just a simple project. I do really use online code editors when I'm working with Google projects just because it's just quicker and faster and I don't have to um, open up a bunch of files, especially when they're all not necessary. So first things first, what is HTML? So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is a standard markup language for web page creation. It allows the creation and structure of sections, paragraphs, titles, all that kind of stuff, links using HTML elements. It's basically the building blocks of web pages. So you have um, tags and attributes, and I'm gonna discuss a little bit about how those work, but I want this to be more of a practical video and kind of get you started in HTML and CSS, um, specifically of how it's going to work for your Google site. It is very different doing it for Google sites versus doing it for like building a custom website. So let's just look at the basics. So what is um, the first thing you need to know about HTML? Most HTMLs, if not all HTML documents, start with an index file. You know how everyone wants to have the plugins be added to their Google site and they're really frustrated that they can't add them? That is because you do not have access to the index file nor to the website header or the head code. An HTML document starts with this section here, which is the head section. We do not have access to this head section, therefore we can't add anything to there, nor can we add any plugins. The basics is the next part that we really should discuss. It's just the basics of writing HTML. It is written very much like a five paragraph essay if, <laughs> if you're writing it for Google Sites. Typically, a, a regular web builder, you'll have, um, say, let's see, what's one of them? WebEx. I think it's WebEx. We can import files. Um, we actually end up separating out of the, separating the file. So you'll have your JFs, JS file, your CSS file, your HTML file, um, and generally they are all separate files. For Google Sites, they all must be written as one document. They cannot be separate files. So a lot of times when people are asking like, wait, how do I add this to the Google Site? It's because your, your site, your um, HTML is separated out and you need to make it one document instead of the, the multitude of three documents. Now, typically I don't have to worry about adding most of the things I do. I don't do anything that really has to deal with uh, JS. So no JavaScript added on my end with the exception of like a little bit of certain things, certain things, all of your tags need to be lowercase. It's okay if they're not, it'll still function, but it all needs to be lowercase and everything follows a script. You start off with the head and then the style and then the body that is, and then the script um, and scripts can be also in other areas too. And you can have other elements nested within um, the body. The only place you can't really do that is in the style section and in the header. But in the body, you can actually add additional styles separate from the style section 
of the web builder. So if you have something that's specifically like your H1, which is your header, and all the headers are blue, and this one header you don't want to be blue, then you'll have to add a style attribute to that particular H1 header in order for it to bypass the style sheet that's already written. And the style sheet tells everything about every single little line. But you can also write that in the style sheet and just tag it as something different. So that's when we start talking more about um, classes, class, like the classes tag and attributes and how attributes change what your HTML does. So that's just the gist, <laughs> the very, very, very gist of the HTML file. So now I'm going to share with you how we're going to make some changes to this particular HTML file and, you know, your HTML journey. Now, I should also mention, because I haven't mentioned it yet, is CSS and styles are very different from HTML. We add styles to HTML, but your design can exist without CSS. Um, we have different frameworks that we work around and that we use, such as Bootstrap, um, Materials. The, there's different ones that you can use, but you can also write your HTML without using a framework for your, for your design. So primarily, it's faster for you to use a framework. Like if you want a button, instead of you having to write out every specific detail about buttons, and every button on your site, you would typically just find the framework that you want to use that has the style that you're looking for for your site. It makes it much faster when it comes to um, creating the style sheets. And again, because we're working in a Google site, we don't have a separate style sheet. So this is kind of like an all in one deal when we're talking about HTML and CSS specifically as it pertains to your Google site. In other places, it is separate, but here it's all one in the same. All right, so now let's go ahead and start writing how we would a little bit of HTML for your Google site. And we're gonna do something simple, again, like a product card. Now, I like product cards, um, but we can also make it something a little bit uh, bigger if we wanted to, like a full page, which is essentially what this is. Um, but I just want to start with the product card. So we start all documents, especially in HTML, by specifying what the document is. All documents have to be specified as what language we're writing in. Consider it like I said, the, the five paragraph essay when you kind of have to explain a little bit about what you're going to talk about in the essay, like in elementary school. <laughs> it's the same process. So we start off by saying, hey, we're about to start writing in HTML. And then it's just telling the, the script editor that this is what you are going to be writing in. Okay, just in this particular one is HTML5, by the way. Now the next tag that says HTML is where we signal that we're going to start writing HTML code. We say, hey, we're about to start writing HTML5. All right, now we're about to start writing in HTML. Like that's the language we're gonna use. And then right after you go, okay, well, this is where this head section is where all of the metadata for pages go. So like your, remember I was talking about the title of their page. Titles go here. Um, for your Google site, it's using the H1s as titles. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> it's kind of annoying because it is located in different areas. Um, I think that's a bug though, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll fix it. So we have um, in here the actual title. So the title of the website or the title of, of, of whatever the heck you're going to be writing in, um, which is, like I said, where you would put it. And then most of the time, mo this information is added automatically. So you wouldn't have to add it with the exception of the style sheet. Now, I am linking out to a style sheet, but when you're writing it as all one, you don't have to write this. This portion is not necessary because right after the header is where we'll add that style. 
Um, and again, typically style is a separate um, file. It is CSS is is not the same as HTML, so it's a different different language. <laughs> um, put it that way. So yeah, now we are going to. I'm just going to actually show you guys what this will look like if you were to try to add it to the Google site as it is um, by not adding the style, but just adding this area here. So I'm gonna just copy this information. So copy, and then I'm going to go over here to this Google site. And if you wanna follow along, just create a brand new Google site, which is what I am gonna do. Um, actually, no, I'm just gonna use a regular Google site. So here is a plain Google site homepage and I'm going to show you how to add this code. So we're going to just double click and we're going to select embed. You can also do the embed from the insert. So double click embed and then paste it in here, insert. And now you see, I just pasted the text, but because I didn't copy the style, it didn't copy the purple over. So we're going to have to copy the style into here and there's a way we can do it so that it doesn't completely jack everything up. I'm going to just go over to the style section, copy from the body all the way to the last bracket. And then right here between the head and the body is where we add the style. Um, tags are always added using the open bracket first, lowercase letters, and we're going to say style. I always have my keyboard set to capital for some reason. Style. And then we're gonna use the close angle bracket. So now we've closed it. And now we're going to add in enter style. And it's nesting it under it, which is why you see that it's moved it over to the side. And now I'm actually gonna hit enter again. And we just need to close this out. So enter and then this a forward slash, which means, okay, we're done adding information into this section so we can go ahead and close this out so basically it's just saying stop right here so now i'm just going to copy this here and because of the code editor that i'm viewing it's going to make it think that it's a problem so that's why i'm not paying it any attention so now i'm going to double click in a different space and hit paste and as you see insert and now you see the difference and if you're going to be adding this like for your Google site. Um, if you don't have a height width requirement, sometimes it'll add the scroll bar because it's never ending. But I don't know if you noticed, I did have a height width requirement written in the style section and I have the display as flex. Um, I'm not gonna go specifically into the height and the display flex. I am going to leave resources to this portion of HTML uh, in the description. I mean, of style, <laughs> CSS in the description, geez. <laughs> Again, trying to do this as a part of Google Sites is very tricky compared to a regular website builder, but I want it to make sense for you guys. All right, so now you know that the head section is where we link out to. So if you were to have that style file in a separate website builder, this is saying, hey, link out to the style file, that's why it's href, um, which is how we link out. So now let's make this that we have here into a product card. So I'm going to just delete what I added, this body um, style area, cause it's not needed. And that adds our high friend back here. So let's remove the color because I don't wanna confuse you all. So I'm just going to delete this and delete this. And now we can um, remove the style as well. So delete and just start focusing on the body. So what's going to go inside of the body um, inside of this body section. All right. So now let's just remove this script at the bottom for the JS and we just highlight it and delete it. And you see, we have two body tags that are open. We need to just close them um, or else it creates a problem or an error. So now we have this really basic hello friend that has nothing going on. 
Um, we've already specified like the document, the name of the document, which I've just titled hello. Um, so there's really nothing going on as far as like what our, our, our um, HTML will look like. Let's turn this into that product card, which is going to be really easy to do because most of HTML when you're not using a framework is very simple. If you want to create a product card, you would simply just say card. So I am gonna just change the, the H1 so that this will be our product. So I'm gonna make this, um, say we're selling a, I don't know, a photograph. We'll just say that we're selling a, a photo of a city. So I'm gonna name this um, uh, 16 by 20 framed photo and actually no I'm gonna leave this yeah 16 by 20 framed photo and then I'm, I'm gonna go right underneath the body and I'm actually going to make this the header um, by just copying it because I should have done that first um, and then change the second one to an h2 and the reason I'm doing this is because I really want to have this look a little bit different so this is now the still the h1 um, this is going to be H2, which is the second header, which makes it smaller, so H2. And we're going to just title this um, uh, what it is presently, and then this I'm going to say, um, uh, let's call it, what are we going to call it? City Life. I don't know. I'm making up, I'm making something up real quick. City Life. Okay. So now we have a city life and we have um, kind of this, the subheader of what city life will have. And now we need to add a paragraph to add paragraphs and to specify and to declare something as a paragraph is as simple as using the letter P, P for paragraph. So again, open it up. We want to add a paragraph and we're saying that this now is going to be a paragraph. I'm just going to use some lorem ipsum from the lorem ipsum generator and I'm only going to make this about, I'm going to say, uh, three sentences long because I don't want it to be super long. It is a product after all. If people want to know more, they can click um, the know more about it, you know, that kind of deal. So now I'm going to just paste that in here, the lorem ipsum. Now let me just scoot this over. Uh, and let's see one second. I'm going to make this larger just for me to see just so it doesn't span all the way across because that's going to drive me crazy. There we go. All right. Cool beans. So now we have our, um, paragraph. We have our header. We have, um, our second header and then we have the paragraph about like this and so now since this is a again paragraph we do need to close it out so we need to add our closing tag which usually when you're using a code editor it gives you like the first option because it knows that you started this off and you haven't closed it so there we have it now it's time to add a button so how do you think we would add a button to this well it's it's as simple as it's it's a little simple like adding button but it's also not as easy as just adding button so to add the button we're going to add it right underneath that paragraph for our product card and what we can do there are a few ways to do this we can either um, specify the text first which we could say that we're going to use the paragraph text like whatever we create for the paragraph we could say that this is what we want to use for this button and then add the button attribute to this paragraph so we're basically taking the text and saying the text is going to be the button um, and that's how we would write it in here and I'm just share with you what it looks like so just type in button and then we need to close the button phrase add some text so I think the button will say is add to cart um, so we'll just make this an add to cart or we can make it buy now whatever you know whatever we want it to be but since everything we 
did before is now open. Now we need to close everything, starting with what we used last, whatever is inside. So we used button. So now button needs to go first. So button is where we need to close. And then we are using the paragraph. So it's going to be styled to match what we do with the paragraph. Um, once we start adding that style tag, so we can add that in here. So I'm just going to say um, P again, close the P, you know, and we're good to go. So now whatever we style this P is going to look the same way. Now I'm going to just copy this information and we're going to take a look and see what it looks like in our Google site. So just going to copy it. And if you wanted to, by the way, you could totally just look at it over here, but I just want to share what it looks like in the Google site specifically, since this is for Google's, you know, platform. So paste insert and there you have it it looks pretty much exactly the same um, again not really too much going on we can remove this because there's I mean, we don't have any style so let's remove the style click next save and nothing changed so this is your standard regular degular no fancy schmancy this is what a document or a web um, product car will look like except there's one problem we did not specify that this was a card we actually just didn't specify anything to a website builder um, or to the internet and the programming languages that are reading this they're gonna read this as a page uh, just a regular full page so we need to say hey this is a card so how do we make this a card so to make this a card it's it's a little tricky so i'm going to try to explain this so that it makes sense we need to first create a divider um, and then classify that divider as a card and nest everything in here inside of that card so to do that we we typically would start off by using the dev. So we would say, again, open it up. <laughs> and we're going to say dev. And now that we've said that this is a dev, we need to add a classification. So some sort of class. This is going to be class. But what does this class equal? Like, what does this class mean? What are what attributes are we giving it? So we're going to say this class is equal to, not plus sign, but equal to, and now this is where we'll add some quotes, and I like to do my little air quotes. So this space that we've carved out is equal to a card. So a card. And that's basically what we just said, that this space is equal to a card. And now we also need to make sure that we close this properly, but also close everything inside of here properly as well so that's super important to do what's awesome though is that we don't have to close this class the same way that we would typically close something like um, all of these over here we close it very much just like the p and the other letters which would be just simply using the dev and then closing it and we've put everything inside of this one so let me just move this over so that i didn't type it correctly um, and that's just closing everything out so now i do want to clarify something when it comes to this button buttons in particular buttons and links are always being debated there is literally People will fight you in the streets <laughs> over this debate about buttons. What is the proper way for writing a button in HTML? The reason this is important is because screen readers read them differently. Not only do screen readers read them differently, but a button attribute does something different than just a link. Typically speaking, when you're creating a button, if it's an actual true button, and someone was to hit space 
or enter, if it's a legit button, then it is expected to be submitting something. That's why you will usually not see someone write, um, like, say, a, a button that is supposed to, how do I put it, a button that isn't submitting information. Um, now, let's say you like on my sites, I have buttons, obviously, and they take you to various parts of my Google site. They are essentially just links to other sites. Respectively, you're not supposed to use buttons as that way. They're supposed to be used as links. If you're going to be linking to something, then that is what you're supposed to do. But they're just so ugly and nobody wants to look at links all day. We want them to be fantastic and and wild and beautiful but they don't always work as intended and so it's important to make sure we're writing them correctly but there's always a debate you can write it using javascript but if you do and someone disables javascript on their web browser then they're not actually able to use the buttons this creates a whole issue with your user experience so i would you know steer away from creating my button using javascript for that reason so again we said that this is a card so now let's go ahead and add some stylization to our card our card is looking a little bit boring, a little bit plain. But before we add the style, let's just check and see what it'll look like in our Google site right now. So I'm just gonna copy this and then go on back over here and click edit and then add it here, save. And now I just wanna view it. Just take a quick look. And we can see that I have that scroll bar along the side that you know I absolutely hate. So I'm going to just adjust this in the Google site so that it's just a little bit more narrow and see if that helped. And it definitely did help. But again, there is a way to remove the scroll bar from the embeds. It's simply just disabling it. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and style our card. Now, I would actually add it in here, but because this particular um, reader won't read it from this area. I am going to add it in the style section and then I'll just share with you how I add it over into the, <laughs> the, the file so that I can add it to the Google site. So first thing we need to do is specify what we are styling. I'm going to start with the card because this is the, the product card that we are working with. Um, so we want to definitely state that, Hey, what I'm going to be styling right now is the card for this particular site. So that's why I have that specified as card. And now what are we going to do to the card? What do we want to change? I think the card needs a border. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just add a border for the card. And I'm going to make the border a specific weight around it. So I'm going to say that it is approximately two pixels, just a little bit of a thicker border and it's going to be solid and I want the border to be um, black. So a black solid border around our card. So that's what we have particularly for our card at the moment. Now we see that everything is kind of, you know, stuffed really closely on, along the sides. So let's address that next. Let's talk about padding. Padding is basically how much space you have um, around elements. So I'm gonna add some padding and the padding I'm going to add, instead of me doing each line, I'm just gonna add it all under one line. And I think by adding um, 20 by 15, yeah, by 15 and then colon, close that out. So now I have specified, we have some space along the side, um, along the side and across. So I've already said it instead of me having to do like, okay, add the padding here or add the padding there. Cause we don't want to have to deal with adding the padding in, in different areas all the time. It gets aggravating. So now that we've styled the card just a little bit, let's go ahead and add some more styling to our, our H1 to our title over here, our header. We can decide if we want to bring in additional fonts. 
um, which I always recommend doing. You want to have in other fonts if you want to change the fonts, which to add the fonts, we would add them over here in the head section and link them. It's always better to link them. Um, so we can add them there or we can simply just not add them at all if we don't want to add them at all. I am going to write in this CSS the font that we're going to use because um, again, I'm just going to use web fonts that are pretty well known for this. It should be pretty simple. So for here, um, the H1, I am going to just start by stating that this is what I'm working with. Again, is the H1, if I can type apparently. So H1. And again, what are we going to be doing to the H1? Well, I want to say that we're going to be working on its font. The font for the H1 is going to be different. So we need to specify the font. And what type of font are we going to use? The font family. And what about the family are we going to use? So as you see, the, the script editor lets you choose variations in font. Um, you can choose different types that you want to use. I am going to look for a specific one. And mine is going to be Helvetica which is probably the one that I like to use the most. And that's what we are going to work with. So we are going to use Helvetica. And then of course, saying that, okay, I'm done with that font. Um, and let's just move this over. So we got our Helvetica going on. And now we can specify if we want to talk about the weight of the font, um, or if we want to move the, the location, maybe we don't want it on this side, maybe we want it in the center. So that has to do with the text alignment. So to change that, we'll say text, and then we'll talk about the alignment, alignment. Where are we going to move the font? What position? So text align center, um, obviously is going to add the text to the center. So that's what you'd say text align center. And then if you say text um, align to the left, so we can say left, or we can say text align right, so to the right. And that's how you would align the text. But for me, I'm just gonna leave the text right over here. And then um, I actually think I wanna change the font. I'll change it to something else. But first, let's add the weight of the font. So I'm gonna say font dash weight. And then what is the weight I have? To, so for font weights, you have to know what the font weights are. Some fonts don't have um, the same weight. Some only have like one weight and that's like 700, um, which is really thick. Some will have really thin fonts, so 400. Again, just super thick or super thin fonts. It really just depends on what you're using. So that's a 400. I could say 100 if it had it, but 400 is regular. There is also um, 200, but I will again go with 400, which is the regular weight as you see. And there's some of them go up to 900, makes it really chunky. Actually I like the chunky font, so we're gonna make it 900. Cool, so we've styled this. Now let's style the paragraph font. So I'm just gonna say P and then Again, how we're gonna style it. I want it to sort of match, so I am actually just gonna copy this information in here, paste it here, there we go. Um, and that makes this a little bit heavier, but I am gonna change the weight to about 400, not whatever that was. So about 400, and then I wanna make the text size a little bit, say, um, bigger. Cause right now it's a little small, maybe I want it a little bigger. So I'm going to increase the text size, the font size um, to maybe I'm gonna say about 14 points. So let's see, that is going to be font dash and then obviously size. So then this is what we're saying. We're gonna change the font size and then how many points of the font size. So. 14, don't be like that. So a little bit bigger of the font. Now I did forget to add the H2. So I'm gonna add the H2. I am just gonna copy this and then change it to copy, paste it right in between. 
and name this H2. Cool. So now the H2 is also just as thick and bold as the, the header. Now, when looking at it, I think to myself, hmm, how can I make this look better before we style a button? Um, what can I do to, you know, add some pizzazz? This is a product card after all. We need to have an image of the product. So in the HTML document, we're going to add a product, like an image of the product. So to add an image, <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna sound funny. Um, to add an image, we are going to add it inside of the product card. So I'm gonna go underneath where it says the dev class, and we're looking at the card. And now since we're adding an image, I need to specify that we are adding an image. So this is going to be the link to the image. So I need to add the source of where that link is going to be, and then where is that link? So I basically said, hey, this is a photo. The photo is located at, <laughs> that, that's literally what it, what it translates to. So the photo is located at, and again, I like to use um, post image, but for the sake of this video, I'm actually gonna use place holder. Um, so let me just pull it up for you guys. You can take a look. So this is just a place hold. Um, it's placehold.co and I am just going to copy the color one because I do want one in color. So I'm just going to copy and then it's specifying the size just so you know. This specifies size of the image. So now I'm going to add that link right in here. Pasted the link in. So now I have the link added right before, but it hasn't done anything. And why do you think that is? It's very simple. First, you need to also add some alt. So what the image is going to be. So I'm just going to say alt. And then what, what are you saying about the alt text? What are you describing about this image? So this is going to say, um, uh, 600 pixel, whatever the image actually shows, image, image. So I'm going to just specify that. And then I am, you can either add a style or not add a style. So I'm going to add a style. So style, styling the image separately from the style sheets. At least here I am. Um, so we'll say style and we'll say equals. And this is where I'm going to add like a width. If I don't want the image to be the full width of the product card or span side to side continuously, I can add a width. So I'm just going to say that this width is, say, roughly 60%. And you want to use the percent symbol of this, you know, product card. So that's why it's the 60%. And then obviously just kind of close that out. So we've gone ahead and we've closed it out. Let me just make sure I wrote that right. 60% from the background. All right, that works. So I've styled it so that it's only 600%, but we can make this 100% um, of the actual product, which I think is gonna look fine. This looks really neat and kind of clean. Um, and we can actually move the image so that it is under the header. Um, if you so prefer. So that's what we'll do. I'm just going to copy it and then right where it says city life, I'm going to paste it right underneath. And then I'm going to highlight that top part that I added and just delete it because we don't have it there anymore, which I guess that looks fine. That, that works out. All right. So it looks pretty good from here. Now let's just go ahead and style the button. So I'm going to go ahead and just move back over to the styles and we are going to um, add a space and I'm going to just say button. Now buttons are components so they are um, styled a little bit differently than you would like the HTML but we are still going in order if you can see. We're going in the order in which things are appearing um, on our 
<laughs> in our HTML. So we started with the card, then the H1 header, even though I did end up moving the H1 headers because the image isn't here. So start with the card, H1 header, H2, paragraph, and then the button. So now we need to style, style our button. And so I am going to first think about like what I want the button to look like. Um, we're not talking well, for this tutorial anyway, I'm not going to talk about, again, um, the different types of frameworks you can use for your buttons, such as Bootstrap. Um, we are going to be styling our, like everything else in CSS. So we are not going to be using any frameworks for this, which is why I haven't used any to begin with. Um, so let's talk about how we're going to frame, frame, how we're going to style this here button. So the first thing I want to do, actually, instead of just leaving it as um, a regular button, I want to say that this button that we are styling is located in the card. So this is the card button. So we need to first acknowledge that this is the card and the button that is located in the card. And how we do that is by first adding the fact that it's a card before the button. You see what I'm saying? So we're adding whatever is around it and then the actual name of it first. So we say dot card and then button. So that is what we're going to be styling. And now I am just going to start styling said button. Now, buttons, they, 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 they can be, this is why most people just use a framework because it, it's not difficult to style in CSS. Um, it's literally, it's a logic based kind of style. Um, so for example, I'm going to say that there is, um, no border around it. So, so you can either write that there is no border by saying border, um, and then none. But again, it just doesn't make sense because there won't on, well, there will be a border. So border none. Um, and then you can actually see that that removed that outline that was around the original button. So we just removed that outline. Now let's talk about the padding on the button, which again, that has to do with the spacing around it. So I'm just going to say there's text in the middle and we're going to say padding and we're not going to specify like each side of the padding. I'm just going to say that the padding is um, a 15 px. Okay, so you see how now the the button is nice and chunky, um, and we've added a good amount of space around the button. So the button's text. That's the the distance between the text in the center of the button and the actual like borders of the button. All right, now what color do we want the um, the button text to be. If we want to specify the color of the button text, we would just say color. Um, again, it just depends on the framework that you're using. We're just using regular, regular, regular. Um, I'm going to say that this is going to be blue. You can use other colors, um, but uh, blue violet, blue violet. I don't know. I feel like red is going to be better. So we'll say red. No, 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 no. I'm trying to think of a better color. Um, orange. <laughs> we'll say it's orange. It's an orange add to cart. Okay. So now that we know the text is orange, let's change the background color. So to change the background color of the button, it's very simple. It's literally background. And you see it's down below color. And so what color do we want the background to be? You can use the hex or you can type it out um, or you can use actual words. It's totally your choice. Um, so I'm going to say that the background is black. So I can either say black um, just like that or I can do the little hashtag sound and, and then zero, zero, zero. You don't have to go all the way with the hex for blacks and whites. So you would literally say zero, zero, zero and F, F, F. You don't have to put the full F, F, all five. Is it five? Five or six? I am up late. <laughs> oh my goodness. I believe it's six. It's a long night for me. But anywho, 
Moving on, you see that we have the button. We've specified what it kind of looks like, what we're expecting it to kind of look like. But um, I think we could do better with our button. So let's just make it do other things. Um, again, we won't get too complicated in this tutorial. Again, this is a beginner course. So I want to make it a little bit simple, um, at least for the button. So let's, um, let's make the width of the button like span much wider so we'll say the width um, for this button is going to be 100 percent and so that's saying the button is 100 percent from here to here obviously there's um, padding that we have so the padding protects us from all the going all the way over to the corners so that works out um, what next? Uh, da, 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 da. What should we add? Let's change what it looks like. So you see right now when I hover over the button, it doesn't do anything with um, as far as like the cursor. Let's change the cursor. So we're going to change the cursor. Um, if I can spell right now. Yeah, we'll make the cursor a pointer. So um. By adding the pointer, it's showing that it's clickable. So we've just changed the cursor to be a clickable function here. Now it's literally just changing the style. It doesn't actually mean that it's going to click because um, <laughs> you can make the entire document cursor a pointer. All right, now um, let's change the font size. I do think it's a little too small. So I'm going to come right over here and we are going to, uh, let's see, the font size we are going to make a little bigger. So font um, dash size. And we're going to say that the font size here is roughly 18 points. All right, so that's a big, a big set of points right there. <laughs> so add to cart, we already now have our add to cart. Boom, done, looking fantastic. Okay, but I think we can do something even better. Let's say, for example, you want the, the card when you hover over it to um, change the opacity. So when you hover over the card, you know, it doesn't just look stagnant like this, that it actually like goes brighter or darker or changes color. That is where you'll have to create um, the another attribute to this. So I'm going to just get rid of that empty space. Um, add this down below the, just right below the actual card. And this is going to be again, a dot card. And again, the button, because um, that's what we're going to be working with is the button. And now we need to add what we are going to be doing. So the hover is what we're going to be doing. So what are we going to do when you are hovering over the, the card? What are we doing? So again, it's telling a story whenever you are writing. And right now we're saying, on the product card button, when you hover, do what? What do you do? Um, it's very simple. We're going to change the opacity. So the word is opacity. If I can spell, I can never spell. Okay, opacity. And then we're going to change the opacity to 0 0.7. No, no, 0 0.8. All right, so now when you hover, it changes the opacity. Um, so we can change the opacity and we can choose the color. So we can say color. And um, we want to do background color. So back ground. Okay. Background color is going to be, I don't know, brown. So <laughs> now when you hover over it, the background color is brown. Um, or we can say the background color is green or blue, or yellow, or purple, or red, or chartreuse, or whatever color you want it to be. But now you see when you hover over it, it is now green. All right, so now let's look at this product card and say, hmm, maybe you're looking at it and you're like, man, I still think it needs a little something. Um, maybe you think that 
the background you want to have an actual color in the background of the card so to do that we can go right back up to the card and again add that background so background and we'll say background color and we can make it brown and that'll make the whole product card background brown um, or we can make it blue or green or yellow or purple or red or whatever um, but let's just say we're going to just make it white um, let's say the white smoke awesome and I think that looks phenomenal and you know what I don't want this to be green well yeah, let's leave it green. When you hover over it, it'll just be green. All right, so this is pretty much what our product card looks like. I think it looks pretty good, pretty great. You know, it's a very simple product card. Um, I have not rounded the borders or rounded anything. I just really wanted to show you the gist of what starting that HTML process looks like along with CSS. Um, so now let's put this all together and add it into the Google site. So this is section here we've already pretty much completed. We, we know what's going here. Um, now we need to just write underneath the header, add that style, and then let's close it off. Close that tag. Yeah, okay space and then I'm going to go right in between here and now where we have that CSS I'm going to just copy this information copy and I don't know why I always want to paste it like that it doesn't show up and paste and now we are just going to highlight all the information in this document copy and then we're gonna head on back to our Google site, double click, and we're going to paste it in our Google site. All right, so now we've pasted it in the Google site. We just need to make this bigger so that it'll fit correctly. Uh, just like this. And now let's view it. So this is what our product card looks like. Let's see what it looks like on a phone. So now we see that we have this scroll bar, the dreaded scroll bar. Oh no, what are we gonna do? I talked about this before. <laughs> um, there's several ways to get rid of a scroll bar. You could actually make it not scroll at all if you wanted to. Um, personal preference. But I am going to, first of all, make this smaller. So it, this is, this card stretches. Um, it's actually quite responsive. If you'll see, I have not really set any requirements in it. Um, so now when you look, I've stretched it and it fits. But we have this long border down here. And if you want to get rid of it, you can drag that up. Um, but when you do that, you might see that there's... The, the box but the box isn't here right now so I'm not too concerned with it but let's just say you you put it in there you want it to look a specific way and you do have the 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 bar so I'm gonna stretch this out so maybe you want the product card to be a little bit bigger so like this big um, and you you don't mind people scrolling in it but you just want to get rid of the actual scroll bar because you don't really like to see the scroll bar um, you can just you can disable the scroll bar so let me show you how to do that so it's very easy to remove or disable scroll bars basically a scroll bar is an overflow um, so something in the body that just overflows so what you'll want to do is hide that overflow there are a few ways to hide overflow, but it's literally just, I guess it's better to, sh to just write it in. So um, right in the style section, you want to add right before the card um, that overflow. So I'm going to say overflow. Awesome. So I've added it here so we won't have the scroll bar, but I'm just going to copy this 
and go over to the one in the Google site. Let me make sure this still is the one with the scroll bar. It is. Okay. And I'm just going to edit it inside of here so that I don't have to keep copying and pasting from over there. So right in the style, control V, next, save. Um, let's see. Let's see if I wrote it right. Eh, no, I must have written it wrong. Oh, okay. So one thing I forgot. Um, we didn't say <laughs> we didn't say anything about where the scroll bars are gonna be. We just pasted it in the style, and the style section's like, but what do you want me to do with this information? So we need to tell it that it's for the body. So for the body, um, the body of this HTML document overflow hidden so please hide the scroll bars and then we want to close that out next save and let's take a look and now we don't have the scroll bar <laughs> whatsoever and you're actually unable to scroll now so if you ever find yourself inside of a google site and you you still want the scroll but you don't want the scroll bar um, don't use this one because it will just keep you from being able to scroll. So I hit the scroll bars, but I'm also unable to scroll at the moment. And there is another way of doing it so that you can still keep the functionality. All right, so now let's just take a look and we are still able to scroll. So we didn't lose the functionality because we actually wrote it now so that you can still scroll and it's not blocking you from being able to, to do that. So just keep that in mind. It's important to write it correctly or else you will not be able to scroll whatsoever. If you just simply type um, overflow hidden, it will stop functionality. All right, so we have our wonderful product card and I'm just gonna delete this section here and sit our product card right here in the middle and I'm gonna see if it looks like I want it to look and what it looks like on an, um, like, what do you call this? <laughs> on a device and then on a full screen. So yay, we have a beautiful, simple, clean, lightly styled <laughs> um, product card for our Google site. Now, I know it wasn't like super in depth on the HTML, but that's because these videos can be quite long. It does take a very long time to write HTML and CSS for um, various things, but I wanted to give you kind of that, that overview so that you can get started in your design journey. Um, and I also, I find it easier to start with something small, like a card versus a full page, especially when trying to teach people like the basics. If I start you off with like a full page, everything, you're going to be so like lost and confused. Um, so this was just a small bit of it. And we could literally, I could literally make thousands of videos about um, HTML and CSS, but I won't because they already exist. <laughs> but I did want to do this because you all requested it. All right, so make sure you vote and select the next video. And if you actually like this video and style of videos like this, and you want to see more HTML or learning about HTML, um, just let me know and let me know specifically if there's something you want to learn how to create in HTML and CSS. Like there's ways that we get around using JavaScript <laughs> um, because not everybody, like we just, we're front end. All right, that's just what we do. <laughs> All right, thanks again so much for watching. And of course, laters.